I've gathered 10 old but gold tricks for stable diffusion that might just surprise you. Think you know them all? They might have slipped through or bypassed your mind. Either way, a fresh look never hurts. Keep in mind this is a personal list I made for me personally the long time ago and some of these techniques are known or old but stay tuned because you might learn something new and if not, at least you'll get a refresher. Number 1 Black or White Background If you want to create images with a black or white background, there's a trick you can use that works most of the time. You can also use a gray background to make it easier to remove the background later on. To use this trick, create a solid color background in either white, black, or gray in the size you want your image to be. For example, if you want to generate images in 1024 by 512, create a solid color background in those dimensions. Next, open Stable Diffusion and go to the Image to Image tab. Use the solid color background you created as your input image and set the denoising strength to 1. Set the dimensions of your output image to 1024 by 512 and adjust any other settings you prefer, like CFG scale or sample steps. Now, it's time to prompt your image. You can guide stable diffusion a bit more by adding white or black background into the prompt. Once you've set your prompt, Generate the image and it should be isolated on the solid color background you used. This makes it easy to remove the background later on if you want to. Number 2. Ultra Sharp Upscaling Download the 4x ultrasharp.pth upscaling model. Place the 4x ultrasharp pth file into your stable diffusion web UI folder under models ESR gone folder. After you have installed the upscaling model, generate images and text to image. Once you have found an image you like, send it to image to image. Under image to image increase the size by 2x. In this example, I'll generate it a 960 by 540 image. So when I send the image into image to image, I'll set the size to 1920 by 1080 since that is two times the size of 960 by 540. Set your denoising strength to 0.5 then regenerate your image. Don't forget to use the same prompt from text to image and also set your seed accordingly. This will alter the image slightly, however, 0.5 denoise strength is what I personally like as my settings so set them to your preference. Recommended to try with denoising is 0.3 to 0.6. After you have generated the 2x upscaled version, send the image to your extras tab and select the 4x ultrasharp.pth file and set the upscale to 2x since we already upscaled the image to 2x using image to image. Number 3. PNG Info This is something lots of people overlook. The PNG Info setting. To access this go into your settings and make sure that save text information about generation parameters as chunks to PNG files is checked. After you have checked that settings apply and restart stable diffusion. Now when you generate images, they will save information into the PNG. When you want access to that information, let's say you forgot what you used as a prompt, or you forgot what settings you used. As long as you didn't delete the image, you can simply upload the original generated image that you created with Stable Diffusion in the PNG Info tab. After you have done that, you can see all the data for that PNG. You can even choose to send the data over to text to image, image to image, and paint or extras by clicking on the buttons below the info. Number 4. Batch Text Prompting You can batch test different prompts by loading this script, prompts from file or text box. You'll be able to upload a TXT file or add your prompts here. Just note that each new line is a new prompt so don't change your batch count leave it at 1. Since each new line is a new prompt, that means each line generates one image so if you had 20 different prompts and set your batch count to 20 you'd end up with 400 images unless that is the goal you were shooting for. This is great for generating shot scenes, setting multiple prompts all at once, generating them and walking away to do something else, or maybe you just want to test a variety of different prompt styles. Set your negative prompt, scroll down, enable prompts from file or text box then enter your prompts here or upload your TXT file that contains your prompts. Number 5. Deep Fake with the Roof Extension Deep faking has never been easier. Now, all you need to do is download the Roop extension. So go into your extensions tab. Click on the available tab then click load from. In the search box, type Roop. Click install then relaunch Stable Diffusion. Now, you should have the Roop extension here like this. Drop in the face of the person you want to deep fake and click enable. Now go ahead and generate an image. And there you have it. Deep faking made it easy. The Roop extension also works in the image to image tab. I have a more in-depth tutorial on the Roop extension in my channel so be sure to check it out. Number 6. I'll paint with control net. Make it easy and use ControlNet to outpaint. Create an image like you normally would then open it up inside of ControlNet. Select the Inpaint button. This step is crucial. Select Resize and Fill. 
When out painting you'll need to start with either the width or height first. So if your original image is 512 times 512. Adjust your setting to 512 by 1024 and then generate. When done, take the generated image and replace the original with the new 512 by 1024 generation and now you will adjust the width to be 1024 by 1024 then generate. If you have lines or seams to fix this, send the image to image tab and adjust your denoise setting to 0.3 to 0.5 it will slight modify the image such as removing small parts or adding to it, but overall it will remove the seam from the image. Number 7. I'll paint with control net plus photo P extension. I covered this step by step in my other video so be sure to check that out. But here is a quick rundown. First you'll need to install the Photopea extension and once that's done you'll have a Photopea tab like this. Click on the X to close the default image.psd tab and go back to text to image tab. Generate an image, in this case for me it's 512 by 512. When you're happy with your results click on the send to Photopea tab. Next click on new project. Since we are out painting a 512 by 512 image, I'll double the size and set my canvas to 1024 by 1024. Now press M on your keyboard to equip the rectangle selection tool and make a selection around your image. Leave some of the image exposed like this. Now press Shift plus Control plus I to invert the selection. Now grab the iframe slider knob and slide it to the left to expose the menu. Now click the and paint selection button. Use these settings. Resize and fill. Latent nothing. Only masked. Set dimensions to 1024 by 1024. Denoise set to 1. Expand Control Net tab. Click Enable. Click in Paint. Click Control Net is more important. Now generate. There you go. Now you can outpaint like Photoshop. Number 8. Force poses with Control Net and Mixamo. You can use an online free tool called Mixamo which uses 3D characters. Best to use a tool like Lightshot to capture your screenshots after you have signed up and logged in. Click on Characters tab top left corner and select a character type. For me I just went with the blank character after click on Animations and find an animation you want or while in the Animations tab use the search function to search for a pose. Adjust your camera and position the 3D model how you want it. Once you have the composition you want, if you are using Lightshot, press F12 and draw a box around the 3D model to take a screenshot. Now head over to Stable Diffusion, now let's resize the screenshot to the dimensions we want to generate. Go to Image to Image tab and paste the image. Set your denoise to 0.1 and set your dimensions to 512 by 768. Click Generate. Now we have a 512 by 768 version. Right click and copy the new generated image and go to Text to Image tab. Open Control Net and paste the image. Now enable Control Net and use Open Pose. Now set your prompt and dimensions and generate. Number 9. Remote Access. I'm surprised that a lot of people didn't know about this. But you can get remote access to Stable Diffusion and access it anywhere. Just add the parameter dash dash share to your command line arguments and settings. Then when it starts, you'll get a Gradio.Live link, just like this. It is accessible from outside. No need for complex setups, dynamic DNS, port forwarding and such. Number 10. Hyper-realistic images with the Luminetti and Realistic Vision model. You can get amazing looking photos by using two models, the Luminetti model as the base model, then upscaling using image to image with the Realistic Vision model. Use Illuminati as your base model and set your prompt accordingly. And your basic Illuminati negative prompts such as Illuminati and Art Fixer, Illuminati and Fixer, and Illuminati and Real Fixer. Generate your images at 768 by 768 as your base images, find the composition you like then send it to image to image. After it gets sent to image to image load up the realistic vision model and set your settings in image to image tab as 1024 by 1024 and set your denoising strength to 0.3. It will produce high quality realistic images, the face may need fixing, so after you find the photo you like, just use Roop or in Paint to fix the face. So that was 10 stable diffusion tips and tricks that range from the simple black or white background to the stunning hyper realistic images. Whether you're new to this or a seasoned pro, I hope you found a fresh perspective or even learned something entirely new. Remember, the world of AI and image manipulation is ever evolving, and these techniques are here to help you stay on top of your game. 
Thanks for tuning into this episode, and if you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on the latest AI insights. Until next time, keep experimenting, and let's dive into the future together.